Good morning. Welcome to Flat Lake Baptist Church, July the 19th service. We apologize to those who always watch us on Facebook and on YouTube for not being there last week. Becky and I made the mistake of eating at Cracker Barrel last Saturday, and we've had to stay away from everybody, and, and there wasn't time to do a Plan B for last Sunday morning. But uh, we're glad to be with you today on uh, streaming only service. And uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer as we begin. Father, we thank you for this day, for the privileges that you've given us, for the blessings that you've sent our way. We acknowledge that they're all from you. We thank you for your love for us. We thank you for our church. We pray that you'll be with all those that would love to be in church today but can't because of this disease. We just pray that you would uh, give us a vaccine and give us a healing and help it to go away quickly so that we can get back to normal. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So I will trust 
today. First of all, I have a card to read that I didn't get to read. wasn't here last week and I forgot it the week before. It says, To my precious church family, this note is not nearly enough to thank you for all that you've done during the unexpected death of my dad. Your prayers have gotten us through this difficult time and we hope they will continue. Your outpouring of love, shown in cards, visits, food, monetary donations, and other acts of kindness will not be forgotten. You truly are a special group of people. I love and thank each one of you from the bottom of my heart, Angie Brink and A.J. Hughes and the Peter Schiff family. Continue to pray for them. Pray also for Babe's sister and for George Brinkley. Uh, there's a couple of unspoken ones that were added to the list and then all the others that have, are still on our prayer list. In the way of uh, birthdays, uh, last week, Mike Speaks, Bennett Kane. Uh, on the 17th, there was three of them, Jeremiah Hughes, Jennifer Hughes, and Allie Wadsworth. Coming up this week, Stephanie and uh, Audrey Van Hook on the 24th, and Johnny Rogers on the 22nd, Patty Harris on the 25th, Tyler Radner on the 26th. Stephanie's on the 20th. I didn't say 20th on hers. The way of announcements, uh, unless conditions approve and unless we get a, a negative result on our COVID-19 test for Becky and me, we'll need to postpone the in-person worship for one more week until August the 2nd. And we'll keep you posted if there's any changes. Hope you all have a a good week and uh, pray for all these special needs. Pray for our leaders and the decisions that they have to make. Thank you. My heart has known your peace. I've traveled far, still there is far to go. And in my heart there is a longing to look upon your face. Where you are is where I want to be.
God's only Son, you are the King of who I am. You are my King, you are the Lamb, Lion of Judah, Seed of Abraham. God's only son, you are the king of who I am. You are the king of who I am. The story is told of a man who went to see the doctor. The doctor asked him a few questions, examined him, and said, have you had this before? He said, yeah. He said, well, you've got it again. <laughs> uh, you've had this message before, but you're going to get it again. Uh, basically, because the Sunday school lesson that was to be had today, which we didn't get to have because we're not in person today, uh, was so relevant to what's going on today. And the text is from Romans chapter 13. Paul says, Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Sometimes that's a little bit hard for us to swallow. We don't mind if it's the one that we like, but if it's one that we don't like, that's another story. <laughs> but... Uh, uh, he didn't say just the ones we like. He said the powers that be are ordained of God. And for a cross-reference, if you turn over to the book of Habakkuk, the Old Testament prophet, uh, he was concerned about what uh, the message God was giving him, about what was going on also in the land in his day. He said, O Lord, how long shall I cry, and thou wilt not hear? Even cry out unto thee of violence, and thou wilt not save. Why dost thou show me iniquity and cause me to behold grievance? For spoiling and violence are before me, and there are that raise up strife and contention. Therefore the law is slacked, and judgment doth never go forth. For the wicked doth compass about the righteous, therefore the wrong, therefore wrong judgment proceedeth. Doesn't that sound like today? But God speaks to him and says, Behold ye among the heathen, and regard, and wonder marvelously, for I will work a work in your days, which you will not believe, though it be told you. For lo, I raise up the Chaldeans, that bitter and hasty nation, which shall march through the breadth of the land, to possess the dwelling places that are not theirs. They are terrible and dreadful, their judgment and dignity shall proceed of themselves. And he goes on talking about what they will do. And we know from history they came and, and captured, uh, defeated the nation of Judah and uh, destroyed the walls of Jerusalem, took people captive back to Babylon, and uh, Nebuchadnezzar was the king. And uh, God raised him up, he said. He was God's man for that hour. Was he good? No. He talked about how wicked they were. And yet his plan brought about the preservation of the remnant that would come back to the promised land, back to the, the land that God gave them. And they would be true, they would be faithful, uh, they would keep the law and keep the commandments. Paul says, Whosoever therefore resisteth the power resisteth the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation or judgment. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou not then be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. He says, For he is the minister of God to thee for good. If thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Now some will say, well, What about those that 
may take advantage of their situation. The Bible says, Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. God will judge them, He will punish them. And that will take place. Uh, maybe not on our timetable, but no one escapes the attention of God in what He does. Paul goes on to say, Wherefore you must needs be subject not only for wrath, but also for conscience' sake. We should do what's right, not just so that we don't get a ticket from the policeman on the highway, or get put in jail for committing a crime that we shouldn't do. But we should do what's right just because it's right, because of our conscience, because of the Holy Spirit indwelling, because of the knowledge that that's what we're supposed to do. And he says, for this cause pay you tribute also. I know it's not April 15th, but that's a, a bad day for most people, tax day. Uh, the Romans exacted uh, tribute or taxes from the Jewish people and they didn't like it. They resented it. The Roman army was an occupying army. But he says, pay you tribute also, for they are God's ministers attending continually upon this very thing. Therefore render to all their dues, tribute to him, tribute is due, custom to him, custom, fear to him, fear, and honor to him, honor. Uh, we need to respect our leaders. We don't have to agree with them on everything they do, but we need to have respect for them, whether they're the one that's in our party or the one that's in the other party. Uh, we need to have respect for them. He says, Owe no man anything but to love one another. We owe everyone love. And he says, He that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. And Paul quotes the commandments, which they were familiar with. And he says, Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Love is the fulfilling of the law. In these times of, of COVID-19, we need to think about our neighbor more than we think about ourselves. What's good for them more than what's good for us. And uh, even if we think they're being silly, uh, if you ever deal with those that have dementia, that have Alzheimer's, you don't argue with them that what they're doing is wrong. You uh, play along with them and coax them into where they need to be and in, into a more uh, comfortable state of mind. And so, uh, we don't want to work ill toward our neighbor. We want to do what makes them comfortable and uh, what uh, will show love to them. He says, uh, let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Uh, most arguments have to do with the flesh, things of the flesh, things of the world. And uh, we need to not be afraid of what the future holds. Jesus knew He was going to the cross of Calvary, but He wasn't afraid. He went to the cross uh, and gave His life there for us because He loved us. Love does not work ill, but works toward the benefit of those that they love. And as far as uh, Citizenship is concerned, that's what we're talking about today. We are citizens of the United States of America. We're also citizens of the Kingdom of God. Uh, to be a good citizen of the Kingdom of God, according to Paul, requires being a good citizen of the United States of America, doing what we're uh, told to do. Now you may say, well, we've been told to do some things that we shouldn't be told to do. But, uh, if, matter of the fact is, if we had done what we were asked to do, we wouldn't have been told to do. <laughs> and uh, the, there's nothing wrong with going to court as the law allows and uh, trying to get a judgment, uh, setting aside those orders, if you will. But uh, we need to do what was asked and do what is right, and then the law will be a moot point. Uh, even if the time comes when our rights are taken away, and I fear that they are. It's a slippery slope when you do something for a good cause, then it can be done later for a bad cause. Uh, but the time may come when our rights are taken away. The Jewish people didn't have a lot of rights. They had more than some of the other Roman-occupied nations have. But uh, 
God is able to work even in those situations. He's not as concerned about our rights as he is about our heart. Uh, the Jewish people, especially after the captivity, didn't have many rights. But they got back with God and got, things got much better. So let's, let's do what is right. Let's show respect for our, our, <coughs> excuse me, our president and our governor. And uh, always, even when they're not a member of our party, let's show respect and let's be good citizens as God's will is for us, as the Bible tells us to do. Let us pray. Father, we thank you again for the privilege of living in this wonderful country, of being a citizen of the United States of America. We know that we're going through a, a difficult time right now, lots of problems, but we know that you're bigger than all of our problems. And your word says there in the book of Habakkuk, which we were looking at in chapter 2, verse 4, that the just shall live by faith. Help us to walk and to live by faith. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen.
closing song, Stephanie and Brinkley will be doing it as well with my song. <laughs>